Alright, welcome to the Grid Selector tutorial. This is an add-on for the Schematic Brush Reborn 2.0, which I have also made a tutorial for, and you can get a look at that up in the uh, top right corner with the card. And uh, yeah, with that, this is basically just a really nice and efficient way to make the schematics for the Schematic Brush, and we're going to show how to do that how it's so easy. This does have the same basic UI and navigation that the actual schematic brush has. So with that, let's get into it. Let's get to the tutorial for the grid selector add-on. All right, and for the grid selector, the main command we're worried about is slash S, B, R, and G, or grid. And when we enter that in, we get this nice menu and it's pretty easy to sort of navigate it, but basically when you bring up this menu, you do want to sort of keep a track of which direction you are facing. Though we can change it in the menu, it will matter when you bring up the menu. So if we do SBRG again real quick and we bring up the menu again, we're facing north. And if we do that same command facing another direction, it'll bring it up as west. So basically whatever direction you are facing when you bring up the menu is what it will make the direction. So with that, let's go ahead, let's get rid of that by hitting the X and bring up the menu one more time. And now we're facing north. We have we should have our coordinates where we're standing, but we'll just hit that change button just to make sure that our coordinates are going to start where we're standing. So in order to actually make the grid that we're going to put under these trees, we need to make the size and then we need to basically say how many columns and rows for that grid we want. So for this, we only have three different trees in one column. So basically we have rows, we need three, and columns, we only need one. So the offset is basically the amount of blocks that are gonna be in between the different grids that we make, the different squares around these trees that we make here. Uh, for now, we're going to leave it at 1 because that is perfect for these. And then moving on, we have the floor material, the border material, and the offset material. So this is essentially what blocks it's going to put under the trees to represent the grid. So I'm just going to leave it at the default so you can see what happens. And we're going to go ahead and it create. And as you can see, this is not big enough for these trees. If we were to try to select these trees with this, it would not work. And we'll, we'll get into how to select things with the grid in a sec. And as you can see, it also went to the right of me, which is not really what we want. We want it to go to the left side of me. So one more time, we're going to do slash SBRG. And we can see the expand is going to our right like it did that time. So we need to change that, and that'll go left now. So that'll go to the left of us for these trees. And again, we, just, we still do want the same amount of rows and columns. So we need three by one. And then the offset, same. The offset, again, the offset material is that light gray concrete, like we can see in the grid that we just made, the smaller one. And we are definitely going to need to change the size of it this time. So we're probably going to need bigger than 7. So 7 is actually just the white blocks here. It is not including this red border material. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, as you can see. All seven of the blocks that were in this size are actually just the blocks inside the grid. So there's actually a, another two blocks added to the grid. So one more time. Let's bring up the menu fresh again and make sure it's going to the left of us. This time we probably want the size to be about 20 blocks or so, I think, is probably about how big these trees are. I'm not actually 100% sure, but let's hope that that works. So we got 20 blocks in size, three rows, one column, offset of one with the gray concrete, and let's hit create. All right, so let's see if these grids were actually big enough for these trees. We might have to move some of these other trees for them, but it looks like we are good. So I do want to note that if there was a block that is on this border, it won't select that. So it's only going to select any blocks that are in this white concrete right now. Uh, so let's go ahead really quickly, fast forward through me moving 
these trees over to their proper grid spots. Um, and I'm going to try to make sure that the selection is basically right in the corner of the grid. So I want to get the corner of this when I get that. And go to the corner of this grid. All right, and that hopefully is all in the grid. It looks like we are inside it. We are good to go. Oops, we missed some blocks. We'll just put them back on by hand. <laughs> Actually, so it seems like we happen to miss some blocks and those blocks are actually cut off anyway in our selection because those go over the border anyway. So we're just gonna get rid of those. And the last one. So now that all of the trees are actually in the grid that we just made, so this only works with the grid that you're actually making with grid selector. So you can't just make a cube yourself and pretend like that is the grid. Uh, you have to use the commands in order for it to actually be a proper grid. But with that said, now we can do the fun part. So again, same with schematic brush, any of these tools, the swords or any of these tools, except for the wooden pickaxe will work just great. So any tool, we'll just grab a random one and do slash SBRG space and then select because we want to select these trees that we just made here. So we go and right click on the grid itself. And as you can see, it's putting a nice little thing around it and we can select all three of them or we could only select two of them if we only want two of them to be in this. So once we have done all of the right clicks on all of those, we do have to actually input them and make sure that they are going to be able to be saved as schematics by then left clicking. And then we can see it used the grid selector and we saved those schematics. But in order to actually save those schematics with names, we need to first do slash SBRG again, space, and then export. I'm gonna type in grid selector trees. And it's good to note that the underscore and number that you put will automatically be added to the grid selector. So if you're making schematics with the grid selector, the underscore and number will automatically be added to any of the schematics and all of the schematics that you have. So if you only have one, it will do underscore zero. And if you only, and if you have a thousand of them, it'll do underscore zero to a thousand. So we go ahead, get rid of that. Just enter that name. And it, you can see it saved three schematics. So we're gonna go ahead. Now that to see how that worked, we're gonna go back into the regular schematic brush tool and we're gonna add a set. And if you wanna know more about the actual schematic brush, I, again, the to, regular tutorial will explain a lot more than I'm explaining now, but we're gonna go ahead and add name and then type in grid. And that should bring up the name, but as you can see, it didn't. So again, I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to show the SBRA info, which is basically just to reload stuff. And this is also something we can do for the schematics. So with schematics, we need to reload the cache. And then with regular schematic brush, we have to do reload, but we were only worried about reload cache when it comes to the grid selector. So if you're not bringing up the names that you just saved, you just do that. Schematics reloaded, as you can see. And now if we go ahead and bring up that schematic brush menu again, and we do change for the sets, add and name, we can get, hopefully when we type grid, as you can see, it saved all of our things. I accidentally saved a bunch earlier, but these are the ones we're worried about. And if we hit tab, we can get that quickly. And like the actual schematic brush, we can get all three of those popped in the brush. Just go back, back, and let's go ahead and bind that and just show that the thing actually worked. Okay. And boom, as you can see, all three of the different schematics are going to be there. We can skip through our schematics here and see all three of the different trees are in this brush. And with that, there is one more thing I need to go over and that is being able to left click these schematics that we have just saved 
and not have to actually save them in order to be able to use them on the brush. So if we do slash SVRG one more time and select, and we go ahead, select all three of these trees one more time, left click to save them. Now, if before we even give them a name, if we do slash SVR and we bring up the schematic brush menu, we can go ahead, we can hit change, add, and as you can see, there's a nice little grid button here. And if we hit that, that's essentially going to add every schematic that we just clicked in that grid. And if we hit back, back, bind, one more time, and we do one more time, SBRS, preview, enable true. We can see all three of the schematics are also going to be there still. We can skip through them by hitting F still again. And yeah, all three of them are there, except this time the, the thing to note is that when you're using this feature, uh, in order to have multiple grid selections, you need to use multiple tools. So I would need to get another tool. And if I wanted to have a different set of schematics, I would need to basically do that with this other tool. So we'll just demonstrate that really quick. We do slash SBR G select, and we can do boom, 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 click those slash SBR, change, add, and then we go ahead and hit grid again, and that puts in the grid thing. Uh, we don't need that. And we can hit back, back, and we can bind this one, and this should make it, yeah, so you can see on this tool, we have the grass showing up, and then if we switch to this, we can have this one. So even without naming any of these schematics, I can still bring them up and use them. And obviously I can paste them by right clicking as per usual. But yeah, I just wanted to note that you don't actually have to save the name of the schematic in order to use it. And you can use multiple different grid selections at the same time, which is honestly a really cool feature about this as well. Uh, so yeah, just something to keep in mind. It is also worth quickly noting that if you don't give the schematics a name with the slash SPRG export and then a name, it won't be able to bring up the name thing when you do the change, add, and name if you don't give it a name. So if you were to log off, you might lose the original grid selection if you were just using this grid button. So something to keep in mind. These are not permanent if you are just using the grid selection button on schematic brush. So with that, that is basically all there is for schematic brush grid selector add-on. Uh, let's go ahead and bring up the menu one more time. As you can see, it's really not a whole lot to, to worry about. It's pretty straightforward and same with schematic brush. Everything in the menu is clickable and then you just hit enter. Once you got the parameters you're happy with, and yeah, as you can see, it very easily and quickly makes the schematics for these trees. And with that, that is actually all I have to say for today. I hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, please do leave them down in the comments below. I will do my best to answer anything and everything that I can. And I hope that this was helpful. Look forward to some of the advanced tutorials coming out for Schematic Brush in the future. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. Video out.